Good morning, everybody. It's my pleasure to be here. My name is Lucas Hiley, and I'm the principal of Laurelton Party Intermediate School, so about an hour down the road from Buffalo. Um, small world story, Ani Ball, the first presenter, and I actually went to school together, so uh, we're connected here at ASU. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about a grassroots project in my school around student goal setting. Uh, so if I was to assign an essential question to this work, it would be how are students agents of their own learning? So I am in uh, intermediate school, th third, fourth, fifth grade, and we are also a PYP school, so that's the secretary version of the International Baccalaureate. And PYP promotes students being agents of their own learning, which is really difficult in today's society when it's very easy for adults to fix everything for kids and kids to have and come to expect immediate gratification through games and all sorts of technology. So there's a little grassroots project in our school where each student has developed a goal for himself or herself. It's connected to some of the work that's going on in our district. We are a one-to-one -one, uh, one -one district, so all the students in my school in our district have iPads or laptops. Um, so there's a big push for personalized learning. So what, about, what better way to engage in personalized learning than to have students developing their own goals? Um, it's also a, a district goal to foster social, physical, and emotional well-being, so we have kids setting some goals around those things. We have a change in leadership that's focusing on care and, and respect. And then the secondary gain here is the collaboration that's been, been going on in classrooms and in virtually every meeting among teachers in the school where we're getting together to talk about goals. Um, so just a quick bit of research around the goal setting. So Marzano and his folks established goals as the process of establishing a direction for learning, which can be applied to academic or social emotional learning. Um, so long story short, Goal setting leads to higher rates of student engagement and higher rates of student agency, which come together to promote student achievement. So I didn't tell you much about my, my district. We are a pretty diverse group of uh, students. Um, half of our students are white, half of our, 30% our of them are African American, 20% um, And so a lot of our students are coming to school not really recognizing or knowing what school is about. Setting a chart setting a course with a goal has been helpful in giving kids a purpose for their own learning. So this is the actual work that's going on in our school. All, student has, all students in our school have an individual goal. Uh, they're designed around the SMART goal framework, which is still considered best practice. Um, and so every individual goal has to be about academics. And I was clear to staff that I didn't want students' individual goals to be about behavior because that's, that, that's like the easy go-to to kind of blame kids for behavior. I wanted it to be about learning. Um, classrooms have a shared SMART goal, and the, the idea is that they're coming together as a community of learners to establish something that they need to work on as a community, um, and also follows the SMART goal philosophy or framework. Goals are kept in a portfolio, and I left that open to teachers to be able to integrate this into their culture however they want. So I've seen we, some of our te my teachers use uh, Schoology and embedded in Schoology. Others are um, literally in a folder, and that's just where they're keeping their work. Um, reflection and feedback are a huge part of the work, and I was hoping to get to the feedback portion this year, and that, that's something that we as a faculty need to study more. Ideally, the research suggests that kids would provide feedback to each other, not just feedback from a teacher about how they're progressing through the goals. Um, throughout the school, there are in every classroom of the class goals and then uh, and as a school when you enter our school in the front lobby there's a board that has every classroom goal on it and they get updated as they're met they get updated um, we celebrate we do a morning show and so whenever a class uh, meets a goal it is recognized on the morning show and we always share what the next goal is and then each classroom teacher has developed their own way of engaging their students in celebrating goals uh, one of my favorites is a fifth grade classroom. The goal, all of her goals are displayed in the front of the room, and they do a goal check-in every Friday as a class. And so in that class, when a goal, that's kind of ceremonial, so a goal comes down and a goal goes up, and they kind of celebrate that as a class together. Um, just quickly, some next steps. We need to continue to refine the goal setting, monitoring and reflecting, staying true to the SMART goal uh, framework and really focusing on helping kids reflect and reflect to each other. Um, I really want my teachers to focus more on, on more important classroom goals. I feel like they are 
easy to focus on routines and transitions and raising hands, but I'd rather them focus on uh, behaviors that will position kids to be more agents of their own learning. Um, and then we will we'll come together and figure out what we want the portfolio expectation to look like. I would like every child to leave Laurelton Part E with three years worth of, of goals as a reflection of, of their learning. So I thought I'd end with sharing a few goals. This, the, the picture on the left is um, Vinny's, and Vinny wants to get to 110, level 110 in reading in Epic. Epic is our online uh, reading resource. And his teacher has him uh, with a plan, and his plan is to use Epic for silent reading. This teacher has really pushed him to think of why, and he's like, well, I, the, the purple sticky note is his why, and that it really says, well, I think I need, I need to be a better reader, and that will help me in everything. Lucy's is on the right, um, and her goal is more specific. She wants to be better at reflect, or summarizing and retelling, and her action plan is that every time she reads a book, she's going to write a summary. She also wants to get better at talking about books and uh, the details of books, so her second goal is that, and her plan is that she's going to talk about somebody who's read the book. Um, this is just a picture of our school-wide bulletin board, so each of those white pieces of paper reflects a class goal, and I have a secretary who helps just maintain um, a new goal. The new goals go up and cover up the old goal um, each time. And then this is an example on the left of a classroom goal. I told you we do a lot of transitioning goal work, and so that's the, the class goal um, to transition within 20 seconds. And the goal on the right is, the chart on the right is uh, fifth grade classroom class schools. They're all going to read 25 books by the end of the year. Um, and that's how they're monitoring that. And then finally, this is another classroom that's focused on transitions. You can see the on the right. Every time they meet their goal, they take down a number, and it reveals popcorn in a movie. So I didn't think to share my contact info with you, but you can Google my name, and then you can you can find my school and uh, get in touch if you have any questions. Thank you.